Hello, Dr. Mintz here. This is a, an ultrasound of a young woman with pain, pelvic pain. That's a very complex, very common presentation. Pelvic pain can be any of a number of things. Very commonly, ovarian cyst, with or without rupture, or hemorrhagic ovarian cyst, also without, with or without rupture. It can be appendicitis, it can be ovarian torsion, it can be an ovarian mass, and a lot of times we don't see anything. But most of the times we'll see something in the adnexa. So this is a young woman with that situation, pelvic pain, more on the right. So I don't expect you to be experts in ultrasound, but you do need to get a sense of it. Now, you can, anybody could show you this image and tell you that this is uh, liver and this is spleen. You know, you, you can't expect yourself, you can't expect yourself to be able to look at it and identify everything. That's not what ultrasound is. Some of you have to either be there with the ultrasonographer or you have to take their word for what they saw, where they were when they were scanning. You have to be careful. A lot of times it's obvious, but sometimes it's not. Okay, so this is a pelvic ultrasound. Take a look. So we start here, and this is the uterus, and they do measurements, and this is the endometrial stripe. So once you know that this is a, a sagittal view of the uterus, you know that you're looking at this sagittal plane cut through the uterus, and you're seeing the endometrial stripe in, down the middle of it there. Looks like there's a little bit of fluid. Remember, fluid is going to be anechoic or hypoechoic, a little fluid over here. Okay, so now we're getting into a structure over here, left ovary transverse. So that looks, in, it's in the left adnexa, and it's typical to have these little cysts around the perimeter. And sometimes they're not so nicely organized like this, but small cysts like that are not really even cysts. They're, they're follicles. They are the uh, future egg that will be released. These are the follicles that will then at some stage of the menstrual cycle or a future menstrual cycle will be the ovum that is released. And we measure those things. Now this is important because we do get Doppler ultrasound and we try to see blip, blip, blip arterial flow in the ovaries. Very important thing to demonstrate. And here 6.6 .6 per second. So anyway, you, you want to look for arterial flow, and you can usually tell by the uh, frequency that it's arterial and the fact that it's regular. Venous flow tends to kind of whoosh, come in and out. All right. So then we look over here on the right adnexa. We see this big thing. It's a big mass. Okay, so you see a big mass. Is it, the ov is it an ovarian mass? Is it the ovary itself? Is it something else next to the ovary? Well, it can be hard sometimes because a big ovarian mass. And remember, again, you may look at this and say, I don't know what I'm seeing. Well, you already know this is the uterus. It's sagittal, and it's off to the right, and you're seeing a big mass here. What's this? I don't know, or up here. I'm not sure, but I know this is the uterus, and this is right adnexal area. When a mass is big enough, it can push the ovary away, and you won't even see it. So sometimes it's hard to tell what you've got. Okay, now here's a transverse image. So now we've changed our plane. So you have this big mass. Look at that, six by nine centimeters. And has a little cystic area in it. Now look at this. This is very important. Here you see Doppler color ultrasound. Color ultrasound showing where flow is present. And you look, you see flow here, flow here, flow here. This is like, this looks like it's left ovary. You can see that little parade of follicles in a circle, but no vascular flow identified within this big mass. So what do you think? You have to think that this is ovarian torsion, and it's critical that we pick those up because if you miss it, the uh, woman will lose her ovary. Very often, there's a large cyst or other mass that causes the ovary to tend to torse. What do we have here? Well, that looks reniform. It's the kidney. And we usually scan the right kidney when we do a pelvic, or often we do, sometimes just to look for fluid. So what's next to the right kidney? This is all liver, right? And so here you just get a sense for what things look like. You don't have to be an expert, 
But if you look at it and say, this, all right, this is a kidney, if you, it's reasonable to ask, hey, what is this? Oh, it's a kidney. Okay, here's cortex and here's the renal sinus fat. All right, and get oriented and kind of get used to it. Now, this, this is a uterus image, sagittal, it says. doesn't look sagittal, but I guess it probably is. And they're measuring the thickness of the endometrial stripe. In older women, of course, if it's abnormally thick and they're not menstruating, then you have to worry about endometrial carcinoma. We get the sizes of all these things just to give something to report. Here again, nice and looking left ovary. And remember, left an ovary is usually three or four centimeters diameter, maybe three by four. Sometimes it's five centimeters. It may be three by five or four by five. That's on the larger side. Kind of the same size as testicles, and they're embryologically equivalent tissues. So three, four, five centimeters. That's normal, okay? And here, you see, we not only have the color image, but we place this cursor, that little parallel line area, is sampling that specific area. So uh, while we see that we have flow here and color, and we see color flow here, here, we're going to query that specific area there, and that's where we get blip, blip, blip arterial flow. Okay, and we we sampled right here in that left ovary. On this side, this is that big mass on the right, has a cyst, and here they sampled that. They didn't see any color in it, but they said, okay, let me put a sample so I can uh, query that specific area, see if there's any pulsatile flow. And just the patient's motion and respiratory motion and your own motion of the, the uh, probe may give you a little bit of flow effect like this, uh, but there's no demonstrated vascular flow. So this is an ovarian torsion by ultrasound. It's fairly uncommon. Uh, I think I've seen maybe a couple, maybe two or three in the last six years, but we've, we always Doppler the ultrasound. Any person that has, any woman who has right lower quadrant pain or pelvic pain, whether we see a normal ovary or not, we still do Doppler just to be sure because it's such a, an important diagnosis not to miss. All right, now you can read a little bit more about this in, uh, in the, gen in the uh, requisites text page 275 and 276, not much there, just a little bit to read and a couple images to look at. So an important diagnosis, we don't see it too often, but when you have a woman with right lower quadrant pain, the things to worry about are appendicitis and ovarian torsion. If you get an ovary with just a cyst or a hemorrhagic cyst, you're happy as can be. But those are the two things you worry about are main things are appendicitis and ovarian 